I saw in this neighborhood was a lot of drug sellers, a lot of drug sellers, a lot of drug uses, and they would sell right in front of my home. So me being a former boxer, I would run up, scare the customers away. And I was one particular time I grabbed this kid. I said, don't you ever do that again. I was, I was going to beat the living daylights out of him. And you know what this kid said? He said, sir, I'm sorry. I said, what did you say to me? He said, I'm sorry. I didn't know. And then right then I said, it's some hope in that kid. When I, I started in my basement training the, the one kid that I pulled off the street and what happened is the very next day he brought another kid. That kid brought another kid so it was by word of mouth it started spreading. I was 30 years old when I first started trying to convert the drug dealers into the boxers and just take them out of the element of street violence or, or selling drugs and give them a positive outlook on life. I grew to not just like the kids, I grew to love them. Growing up over there was a rough neighborhood, so you had to know how to fight because you was fighting every other day. And I was pretty good at it myself, but I decided to turn it in to something that I liked to do, but fighting legally, I guess. I had a lot of friends that didn't have a lot of money, so the way you had fun was being reckless, stealing bikes, you know, beating people up, and that just wasn't, that wasn't me, you know, I couldn't see myself doing that. I just love sports. Sports is all I knew. My whole life, I, I've been a good dude, you know. I've managed to stay out of trouble, you know. Didn't drink, don't smoke. I am the first one in my family to go to college. I ended up going to uh, Thomas More for a little bit. Then I moved, came back up to uh, Cleveland, went to Myers University for a track scholarship. But my sophomore year of college, I came back up to Cleveland and I ended up getting in some trouble, which ended up landing me into jail. It was my first time drinking, me and a couple of my, my college pals. I ended up um, assaulting somebody. He broke into my car and stole some things from me. And somebody led me to tell me who did it, and we went over there. And then we ended up kicking the dude door in, you know, beating him up pretty badly. And uh, they charged me with burglary. And I did the nine months at Belmont Institution. And um, I just used that nine months to, to get my mind together and to figure out what I wanted to do when I got out because I shouldn't have been there in the first place. That was the, the, the turning point of my life. When I got out, it was being a family man. That's when boxing started back up. Every individual is not the same. Some people motivate with a lot of yelling and screaming. Some people motivate with a lot of love. Some people motivate, you know, just need encouraging word. DeLorean Gray, he's just like a little bottle of TNT. He, if he hits you, he can hurt you bad. After showing them how to to bring his uh, power from twisting, because he being compact, his, his body attack can be vicious. Coach Fred had taught me a lot. He didn't step my game up a lot. A lot of things I was doing wrong, he helped me perfect, perfected my technique. Little things that a coach should be able to bring out and his athlete, Coach Fred, bringing out in. What I do during the day is work for our bus company here, and uh, it's a blessing to have a job in, in this economy, but that J day job actually helped me pay for a lot of things that I do with the kids. And I, I do kind of skimp on my bills a lot. Like, like now, when we go out of town to Columbus to box, I'm gonna have to kick in a lot of money because the kids, I don't charge the kids. I try to keep it free. When we go down there, we gotta eat, we gotta, Pay for hotel rooms. I get a little money 
left over from a grant to help pay for that I got. And then we're trying to do car washes and the rest is, is on me. I have six kids, 26 for six kids. A lot of people be like, wow, I'm just the matter of uh, you know, taking care of them now. No. My youngest, she's about to be a white now, Desiree. As a father, I'm gonna try to bring them out, and just you know, support them in what they wanna do. Stress to the kids, we gotta go after these titles, these golden gloves, these nationals, and we gotta win them. It is hard to make it out of Cleveland because to me, the best competition is here. D actually has a good shot at the Golden Gloves. If he fights 150, 152 in a Golden Glove, I think he can walk through any guy. Say it's very difficult in this sport for a boxer to actually make money, have to basically go to the Olympics and, and get a gold, a silver, or a bronze. Any one of those, uh, uh, give you good recognition where you can get picked up by maybe a Roy Jones or Oscar De La Hoya, Don King, somebody like that. From a gym like, like mine to the pros, with, without going to the Olympics, it's only one way to do it. And that may be the way that I hate, the, the ballroom boxing. But you can get used up very fast doing ballroom boxing. Because you, you may be making two grand a fight. That's at the most, that's the high end. The low end, $600 a fight. Every boxer's dream is, you know, to turn pro and have a, a good pro career. I would love that. This competition is very steep. It's either you gonna eat or I'm gonna eat. And I know I'm gonna eat. I'm shooting for the W every time. He had the ability to stop him. I thought he was gonna knock him out, but uh, I couldn't ask for better. That was that was money right there. It was wonderful. That's what we worked for in the gym. It's beautiful to see it, see the work come off. Beautiful. So I tried to stay stay focused and stay calm, so I could try to throw straight Chris Scott. So, but uh, Coach Fred said he was he was saying D Lo. He was like, you got you got it, baby. He was like, nah, he hurt up top. And I heard him in the bottom. Heard him in the bottom. He was like, all that body work we worked on, put it to him. Stop him, baby. Yeah, he always intense. And he ain't never been that intense when I'm winning like that, though. But uh, he wanted to knock out. I try to relate boxing to life. Life will knock you down. But you can't just lay down. You got to get back up. And especially where we live, you got to get back up and you got to keep going. And sometimes you got to get picked up. And that's what I do. I pick them up. You know, if they got any issue outside of boxing, we'll sit here all night and we'll talk about it. Because they're just not my boxers, they're my kids. It took me a, a, a while to, to realize that I'm not going to save them all. I <laughs> may. I'm lucky if I can save one. One particular kid come to mind, Nero Payne. Got him out the street. He was like a son to me. Ate over here, slept over here. But he was a drug dealer. 
I got him to stop selling drugs. It took me about a year and got him a job at Kentucky Fried Chicken. And he would call me saying, this is not enough money. It's not what I'm used to. And I would tell him, just don't go out there. Just, it, it's, it's going to have to do. I said, just don't go out there. He said, maybe one more night, one more night. I need some money. I said, that could be the night to kill you. He didn't go out there. One particular day, he asked, could he come over here for one night? He just hit the bag, and I told him, I said, no, because my wife broke her shoulder. So I said, no, I'm going to get boxing the rest for the day. And he, he begged me. He said, let me come over. I just hit the bag myself. I said, no. That particular night, he was walking on the street uh, close to where he lived. It was a heavily drug selling area, drug buying area. The white car pulled up. Three guys jumped out and they started shooting. He got hit in the leg. He fell down. And the guys stood over him and just shot him like six or seven more times. And he died. It took me a long time to, to get over that. He had five fights with me before he was killed. He was doing, he was doing real good. He came to me and said he, he wanted to change for his daughter. And I was so proud of him. He had a bad history, but he had changed. He had changed, but the streets don't, don't allow you to change. I sit here and when I'm by myself, I'm saying to myself, this is too much because I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't have resources. I don't have money. And I said, but I can't quit. I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to find a way. Coach Fred grew up in that same area and money wise, you know, it's, it's tight for everybody, but he finds some way to squeeze out a couple pennies, you know, to do for the kids. And I told these kids, if you ever become pro and you make, make the money, I don't want you to give me a dime, but I want you to help somebody else in the community. I want you to come back and give back to the community. That's what it's about. I'm not going to be here forever, so I need somebody to do it, do it when I'm gone.